When a herd of gazelles saw your approach, they stampeded you to death. Killed by small antelopes. Better luck next time. You were found dead, face down in one of the shallows near your village. It seems you tripped on a root and hit your head on a rock. At least the crocodiles will have a nice lunch today. After your failure, the Libyans drove your people from their homes in the Nile Delta. Your tribe is now forced to wander the desert wastes in search of a new land. You had better start praying to the rain god. While you were fishing, a crocodile dragged you into the water. Your puny Stone Age stick could do nothing to its tough hide. Though you failed your people, you made a happy and very full reptile. With one hit from a stone arrowhead, you were introduced to yet another new technology. Unfortunately, you will not be able to do anything with this knowledge, even though your brain became very familiar with it. Your failure is a disgrace, and because of you, the kingdom has fallen. Suffering from a famine, your people have deposed Pharaoh Narma. The new ruler offers you a chance to participate in the next hippopotamus hunt. You will be the bait. The Pharaoh has died, and the pyramid is still not finished. Joza has instead been buried in a simple mastaba intended for a lesser family member. If you ever make it to the afterlife, Joza will be waiting with the proper punishment for your failure. The sacred city of Heliopolis and its mighty temples have been plundered by the Libyan raiders. In anger, the Pharaoh has stripped you of your titles and forces you to help work on his monument for the afterlife. In case you have forgotten, the builders are buried in the tomb with the Pharaoh when he dies. It appears that you will have all of eternity to make up for your mistakes. Attacking by night, the hostile Nubians manage to pick off your builders one by one, dooming your fort's construction. Because of the sizable gap you have allowed to appear in the Egyptian defenses, the Nubians are now able to raid Egypt at will. The Pharaoh is sending you on a solo scouting mission into Nubian lands without food, water, or weapons. Pray to Ra that your end is swift and that Osiris' judgment is lenient. Your hastily built navy was destroyed as quickly as it was constructed. Your ships lie at the bottom of the sea, where the fish will use them as homes. Your surviving sailors are furious and have tied your legs with a hemp rope. You would feel better about the situation if the other end of the rope was not tied to a heavy boulder anchor, which is being pushed overboard. You are about to become seafood. Your attempt to build the great temple for Queen Hatshepsut was a complete failure. But somehow you were still invited to join the Queen on her expedition to the land of Punt. One of the donkeys has fallen ill and the Queen is looking for a replacement. Instead of taking the lead in the initial attack and pushing through to the enemy lines as expected of a great general, you became scared and ran at the first sight of blood. Even the Pharaoh himself witnessed your cowardice and has called for you to be slowly impaled on your own unused sword. Your people fought valiantly, but they lacked the charismatic leadership of their adversaries. Constant enemy raids have broken your will and forced you into the barren, harsh lands that the other inhabitants find undesirable. Living off what little can be gleaned from the unforgiving landscape, your people dream of a day when a more capable leader will rise up and show them a glimpse of a brighter future. Alas, your armies marched into battle, but most did not return. Outnumbered and outmaneuvered by their Tyrrhenian foes, they fell like stalks of wheat before a scythe. The survivors have regrouped for a final stand, but the future looks bleak. The Tyrrhenians descend upon you, the spirit of Nike, the goddess of victory, at their backs. It will not be long before you are all slain or carried off into slavery. Having suffered disastrous losses to the Minoan betrayal, only a handful of your men made it off the island. They were soon hunted down and slain, but you were not so lucky. For weeks now, you have languished in a dark cell, living off worms and dirt. You nurture the faint hope that some of your men might have escaped and could return with reinforcements, but with each passing day, that notion becomes more and more bleak. The door to your cell opens, and a pair of guards drag you out to your execution. Meet your fate without fear. 
With the death of the great Achilles, the will of your troops was broken. In a stunning and bold maneuver, the Trojan army fearlessly sallied forth from the gates of Ilium, the memory of the slain Hector still fresh in their minds. Your rudimentary fortifications were no match for the Trojan onslaught, and the arrows of Apollo rained down from the sky, striking droves of your troops dead. With your army decimated and most of your fleet burned, you have no choice but to return to Mycenae in ignominy. Unfortunately, your settlers underestimated the resolve of the Luians, who fought dearly to protect their homes from your incursions. Worn down by the raids of Aegean pirates, your people were no match for the Luian onslaught. You and the few survivors had no choice but to flee and sail back to Athens, where you expect to see your name etched on thousands of Ostracon. The combined might of the Spartan land and naval forces was too much for your garrison. As the Spartan army advanced towards the walls of Athens, the harbor of Piraeus was blockaded by a plethora of Spartan ships, preventing any supplies from reaching the city from the Aegean. With supplies running low and morale even lower, you have no choice but to surrender to the enemy. Pray to Athena that they will be merciful. Although the Persians scarcely harassed your warriors, the rigors of the journey were too much for your demoralized company. Internal disagreements racked your command structure and led to indecision as your men perished from the heat and thirst. As you begin to swoon at the onset of dehydration, your last thoughts are of the many men whose lives have been lost. Your armies marched into Persia with the zeal of a victorious force, but for all their hubris, they could not break the might of the army of Darius. When the forces clashed, you failed to make decisive maneuvers when it mattered the most, and your invasion was parried by multitudes of defenders. Having been humbled, you retreat to Hellas with all haste, knowing that the retaliatory Persian invasion is inevitable. In view of your failure to subdue your neighbors, the future of Babylon has become bleak. It is unlikely that it will ever grow outside its initial borders, and it will forever remain a minor city in Mesopotamia, overshadowed by other older and more powerful states, like Assyria and Elam. Maybe a life in the military was not for you after all. Your fellow citizens suggest that you take a job as a bricklayer at the local ziggurat instead. You have failed your king, and many Babylonian cities have been plundered and razed to the ground. Hammurabi has ordered you to be attached by rope to his chariot and dragged along when he goes on his next campaign. Not only have the Hittites sacked our city, but they have also taken all our treasures and idols. No one will ever remember the great city of Babylon, and its legacy is lost forever. Our lands have been ravaged by the Elamites. Although the Kassite dynasty is weak, we do not have the means to overthrow them. It seems that we will be forced to endure their rule for yet another 500 years. Your expedition into the Elamite homeland has ended catastrophically. With our army destroyed and our most holy artifact in the hands of our enemies, the people of Babylonia have lost faith in their king. In turn, Nebuchadnezzar I has lost his faith in you, and he intends to strap you to a ballista bolt the next time the Elamites besiege our cities. Maybe then you can be of some use after all. You have defeated the Elamites, but failed to return the statue of Marduk to Babylonia. Our king is not completely displeased, but in the future he will reserve the more important tasks for people who can fulfill their promises. The Babylonian army has been crushed, and yet again Babylon has come under the rule of a foreign king. The new ruler has demanded you to come to his court and entertain him as the king's buffoon. Our siege has failed and the coalition has broken down, bickering amongst themselves like little children. The Assyrians once more have managed to take power and re-establish their rule over our people. Somehow you were never to be heard of again, but rumors circulate that you were sold to the Scythians, where you spent the rest of your life scooping up horse manure. After failing to defeat the Jomon, you made a hasty retreat to China without the elixir. The emperor is most displeased with your failure. 
He orders you to report to his mausoleum to serve him for all eternity as one of the figures in his terracotta army. You have failed, but do not worry. The elders say there are things other than dotaku bells they can bury to ensure successful harvests. They ask that you report to the fields. Maybe becoming Queen of Japan was a bit too ambitious, even for a shamaness. You might be better off using your magic on something more attainable. There are some sheep who could use a leader. Your sons counsel you on your failure. They recommend that you make peace with the gods by becoming a hermit. They say Mount Fuji is quite lovely in the winter. Because of your failure, your enemies now control the emperor, and Japanese Buddhism is in decline. Better luck next life. The Soga find your attempt at keeping your mother in power cute. They call you Mama's Boy. Your nephew is most forgiving of your treachery. He has even given you a position in his court. Report to him to begin your duties as court eunuch. Though they defeated you, the Fujiwara are most gracious to you as emperor. Although they exiled you, they did allow you to be the ruler of your new home on the northernmost tip of Japan. Dress warmly. You have been defeated by the Hattians and are unable to expand into their lands. Forced to live on the edges of civilization, your people despair. Now, your own warriors have selected leaders among themselves to depose you and your family. They will make sure you provide a new clean skull for the Hattians to decorate. The Storm God is displeased with your failure. The old clan rivalries have returned and Hattusa is in anarchy. Your reign will mark the end of your people's history, but you will be remembered. Your name will become the word for worthless. Your pathetic army has been crushed by the Egyptians, and soon hordes of their troops are flooding your cities, slaughtering your subjects at will. As worthless as your people were while following your orders, the innovative Egyptians have managed to find a use for them. Their corpses have been transported to the fields where they will make excellent fertilizer. The Republic of Rome enjoyed only a brief existence thanks to your inept leadership. Rome has become the butt of every joke from the gates of Hercules to Persepolis. Once again, we pay tribute to the Etruscans. Report to the chariot stable for duty as a wheel rim. The Macedonian phalanxes have decimated our swordsmen, and King Pyrrhus has made a mockery of you as a war leader. Our gains to the south have been lost, and the Macedonians threaten Rome itself. The leaders of Rome request that you report to the archery range, where you will get the point of their dissatisfaction. Your failure to retake Syracuse and the heavy losses you have sustained have infuriated the leaders of Rome. More of our old foes have been inspired to join the Carthaginians in this war. Our list of enemies grows daily. The next time you encounter a Carthaginian war elephant, we suggest you kick it in a sensitive spot and take your medicine. Your failure has condemned Rome. Bolstered by Hasdrubal's army, Hannibal marches on our capital. Our Republic is on its death throes. The Senate requires that you strap yourself to the ram of a trireme and put your thick skull to good use. Your defeat at the Battle of Zama disappoints Rome. The Carthaginians are rejuvenated and more dangerous than ever. Hannibal has outfitted another army to invade Italy, and the Senate fears that many more Romans will die in a losing war. The leaders of Rome require that you report to Catapult Unit 14, where you will be given another opportunity to have an impact on the Carthaginians. All of Greece is warring against us now, and our provinces in Asia are long gone. Rome's losses are incalculable. Thanks to your ineptitude, Mithridates looks like a modern Alexander the Great. You, however, have fallen significantly short of that mark. Report to the arena for duty poking starved tigers with small sticks. The pirates have made a mockery of your boast to return and eradicate them. Rome is disappointed, but because you paid for the expedition personally, there will be no recriminations. The job of eliminating the pirates has been given to a real man, Pompey. You can go along to keep his torso armor oiled. 
Your invasion performed a basic reconnaissance of Britain, but your army has suffered heavy casualties that cannot be replaced easily. Your failure has triggered a crisis, and the tribes of Gaul, having heard of your failures, have begun to rebel. The northern frontiers of Rome may soon be in flames. Report to the Senate, where certain leaders want to take a stab at explaining where you went wrong. Your failure to put down the revolt in Gaul means that all previous efforts to subdue Gaul were in vain, and the Gauls are now united under the strong leadership of Vercingetorix. Having fled Gaul to the safety of the Roman provinces, you learned that a large combined army of Celts and Germans is now on the move to Rome, and so you must hurry back. Do not expect a pleasant reception, however, having exposed Rome to the barbarians like this. Report to the Tiber River for duty as a sandbag. Your loss to Pompey elevates him officially to the post of Dictator of Rome. You must flee, and can only hope to find sanctuary in some forgotten corner of the world where you can live out your days dreaming of what might have been. Future emperors of Rome and the sauce for lettuces will be called Pompey, not Caesar. Your loss to the combined forces of Antony and Cleopatra has compelled you to withdraw to Rome and attempt to rebuild your forces. With the eastern part of the empire now lost to our enemies, it is likely that Antony will follow up his victory by marching on Rome. A second defeat at the hands of Antony will mean the end of your career as consul, and will surely allow Antony to become the first emperor of Rome. The throne of Rome might have been yours if you had been as competent as many of your admirers had believed. Apparently, they grossly overestimated the extent of your skills. The new emperor holds no grudges, however. He commands that you report to the royal latrines, where he anticipates that your skill set will ensure that you are able to truly clean up. Your failure to recover the ransom has led to the execution of Valerian at the hands of the Sassanids. The eastern portion of the empire lies in turmoil, while civil war rages back in Rome over the right to succeed him. The tribes of Germania have crossed the Rhine and Danube frontiers while the Romans continue to fight each other. Thanks to your incompetence, the Empire is in danger of collapse. Report to the Imperial Court for duty as a footstool. Due to your failure to maintain the borders of the Empire, it is evident that all is beyond repair. The eastern provinces are certainly lost. You have allowed Rome to be defeated by Palmyra, a city of merchants, not warriors. Those are German tribesmen beating on the doors of Rome right now, not olive oil salesmen. Your ineptitude has caused the downfall of the Roman Empire, bringing an end to a thousand years of glorious history. Germanic marauders rampage across the provinces, pillaging and looting as they go, while Hunnic horsemen build mountains of human skulls and use fleeing Roman citizens for archery target practice. Get your best sandals on and run! Your failure in the Alps has doomed Carthage. Only a successful invasion of Italy would have slowed the Roman advance. Now, Roman legions march into Hispania, and it will only be a matter of time before they reach Carthage itself. You were a fool to think elephants could cross the Alps, and your punishment is to be slowly crushed to death under the feet of one of your pachyderms. Despite some early successes against the weak Roman interlopers, you have failed to defeat them. Your dreams of ruling Greece and Anatolia have been foiled by your incompetence. The Romans are sending more aid to their Greek allies and the Kingdom of Pergamon. You had better start learning Latin. Here is your first lesson. Where ego sum, hoc ludum est difficila. While your men are unwilling to identify you to Crassus, it is no bother to the Roman consul. He simply orders all 6,000 of you to be crucified. Your failure to drive the Persians back has added to Rome's frontier problems. Most of the eastern part of the empire is now open to further Persian raids and conquest. Though your title as Imperator Orientis has been revoked, take heart. The Emperor has bestowed a new title upon you, Nauseus Maximus. Your failure to defeat these interlopers from a minor backwater town has lost the key island of Sicily to our enemies. Our colonies and trade routes to the west are now in great danger. 
report to fleet headquarters for duty as a rowing bench. The failure of the Carthaginian forces under your command has undone our recent victories over Rome. The people of Sicily now send tribute to Rome, not Carthage. The captain of your ship has been ordered to throw you overboard so that you can swim home through shark-infested waters to receive new orders. Your failure to defeat the Roman army has forced us to accept their peace terms, which are harsh. Take note of the treaty clause requiring that you serve out your years in a Roman stone quarry. 